Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 45 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I'll be showing how I've treated the pond for parasites and look at some additions I've made to the pond for the rud. Before all that, a little update on some of the subjects I spoke about last week. First, the Crucians. No change really. I spotted a couple of occasions when at least one has been chased off by the common carp. It's hard to know how much this is happening without getting the GoPro in. However, as I'm seeing it more than I'm seeing them flash or jump, for which I'm treating, I probably need to take some action. I think I'm almost certainly going to rehome them, as I don't want it to get worse for them. I'll get through this treatment phase and then get them to their new home. Back to the GoPro. I've done some tests and managed to run it consistently without any problems with it turning itself off. I'm not sure what's worked or whether it will last, but underwater filming is back on, probably. I've not done any of this last week due to the slightly blue-green soup I've had, as you'll see later on. Thanks again for all the ways you have all continued to support the channel, whether that's just watching or liking or commenting or subbing. It all helps me to keep on making videos. I'm coming up to the end of my first year of making YouTube videos and I'm way ahead of any of the expectations I had for my videos about my rough and ready little pond and I'm really grateful to everyone who stopped by. I'm planning some things for the channel into the second year, including a year review, some graphical and structural changes and maybe some changes to how I cover topics as well as what I cover. It's not all been decided, but I have a few weeks yet to iron it all out. Right, let's get started. As I discussed last week, I had reasonably clear indications that my fish had a parasite problem and, for a variety of reasons, bought a Blagden antiparasite to treat it. Please check last week's episode for how I diagnose parasites and why I'm using the treatment I am. It's a once a day, five day treatment. So, for five days, my day started administering medicine, which is somewhat of a busman's holiday. The first job is to get some pond water and then to add the treatment to it. Now I've criticised one of Blagdon's products in the past, but these bottles they use for their treatments are spot on. It's really easy to measure the correct dose and add it to the pond water without needing any other measuring device or making a mess. Anyway, for my pond, I needed to use nine 25 mils each day, which I add to the bucket and then mix and add delicately and subtly into the pond. I can't suggest I do this in the best way, however, the fish were utterly unbothered, even though they're generally nervous.
The water then turns a lovely blue-green colour. Not as bad as the antifungal treatment, but still very noticeable. I then got to repeat that for the next four mornings. Annoyingly, due to the dose I had to give them for the volume of my pond, one litre wasn't quite enough. It's no bad thing though, as if I have any worries that the problem persists, I'll treat with another course in a week or so. As treatments go, it's not hugely expensive, so I didn't mind having to get a couple of bottles. As it stands, I'm unsure how well this has worked. The fish have carried on being active and hungry throughout the treatment. 
I've heard one splash from a jumping fish on about day three, but they've shown no signs of irritation from the treatment or from a worsening parasite infection. I'm going to continue really close monitoring to check for behavioural signs that they may still be suffering over the next week. We'll see and I'll update over the coming weeks with the progress. I've talked over a number of previous episodes about any of the species of fish spawning. By far the most likely are the rudd, and we're getting close to the time of year that they might, although when their parents spawned they were slightly bigger. There was only one female in the group of five fish back then, and I had no soft, safe areas for them to spawn in, and the males chased the female throughout the plant baskets. This led to some small injuries for all the fish, but especially the female. Now, I'm not expecting the rudd to spawn this year. I think they'll almost certainly will next year, but to be better safe than sorry, I've bought some spawning brushes. These are obviously designed for koi, but they will hopefully provide a good spawning spot for the rudd too. I had some doubts about where to situate them, but as the previous rudd spawned in this one particular spot, and in the main the frogs spawn there too, the back left corner seems like the best option. Therefore I've attached the brushes to the plant baskets and overlapped them to give a good amount of space. I'm hoping, if nothing else, it's a chance for the fish to get used to them prior to them actually needing them at some point in the future.
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. In next week's episode, I'll hopefully be able to report some healthy fish and show some underwater footage. I'll also confirm plans through the Crucians and let you know what my other plans for what lives in the pond are. There may even be some other stuff that either remains secret or not worked out yet. You can decide which. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.